Ohm's law. So what Ohm's law is, is it's a mathematical relationship between three electrical variables. And those are E, I, and R. E stands for volts. I represents amps. And R represents resistance. And sometimes, uh, well, sometimes we measure that in ohms. And you can see that little symbol that identifies resistance. Now, resistance is pretty straightforward. But when you look at volts, you'd think, well, why isn't it a V? And sometimes you can put it as a V. But it's also been known to be called electromotive force, is where the E comes from. And when we talk about amps, we talk about current, and it's been known to be referred to as intensity of current. So that's where those letters or symbols come from in the formula. Now let's get farther, a little bit deeper into this. Volts itself basically is electrical pressure. It's what pushes the current around. You can look at it like in a plumbing system. If you have 50 PSI or 100 PSI, that's what pushes the water around. It's the same concept. So the volts are what push the electricity through the system. Now, what does it push through? The electricity or the amps, the amperes? That's your current flow. That's like gallons per minute or flow of water in a plumbing system. And then there has to be something that stops it or tries to stop it, like a resistance, and that is resistance. It's just like resistance in a plumbing system. And you could look at it like this. See, the, the, the electrical pressure, the volts are trying to push the, the current around, and you have stuff trying to hold it back. All right? Okay, now, let's go to the relationship. So go with E equals I times R. And what we're going to do here is just keep E constant and keep it at our, our basic, let's say, 120 volts. And the idea is this. In this scenario, where E is constant, if R was to go up or the resistance was to go up, what would you think would happen to the current flow? Well, you have more resistance, so it would make sense that the current flow would go down. And that's exactly the case in this formula. If you do the opposite, let's just say the resistance goes down in the circuit. Okay. What's going to happen to the amps? What's going to happen to the current flow? It's going to go up. Now, what students like to do is put the formula in a triangle. And from that, you can derive the three different versions of this formula. The first one we've already talked about. The second one is when you solve for I. And then when you have a triangle like this, what I refers to, or I relates to, or I equals, is E over R. Same thing for R, is E over I. All right, now, easiest way here, let's just go through a couple of quick examples. So 124, 120 volt electrical system has a total resistance of 500 ohms. What is the current in the system? Put down our triangle, solve for I, put the formula down, plug the variables in. Okay, we have a 120 volt system and a 500 ohms of resistance, and we get 0.24 amps. Same thing once again, go to another example. 0 0.8 amps are running through a 24 volt electrical circuit. What is the resistance? Throw down our triangle. Okay, now we're going to solve for R. And R is equal to E over I, or volts over amps. Put in our variables, 24 volts, 0.8 amps, and what we end up with is 30 ohms. There you go. I hope this uh, quick and easy tutorial on Ohm's Law helped, and uh, have a good day.